as we've mentioned, last night's Republican debate gave us another glimpse at an ugly side of the GOP. Stephen Hill, a gay soldier serving in Iraq, was introduced with this taped YouTube question. In 2010, when I was deployed to Iraq, I had to lie about who I was because I'm a gay soldier and I didn't want to lose my job. My question is, under one of your presidencies, do you intend to circumvent the progress that's been made for gay and lesbian soldiers in the military? Yeah, I, I... But not one candidate on that stage spoke up. Not one candidate told those people not to bore soldiers. But the crowd cheered after Rick Santorum said he wanted to reinstate Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So these are the things cheered at debates. Reinstate, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Do you intend to circumvent the progress that's been made for gay and lesbian soldiers in the military? Capital punishment. Mr. Perry, a question about Texas. Um, uh, your state has executed 234 death row inmates, more than any other governor in modern times. Have you... And letting an uninsured 30-year-old with cancer die. But, Congressman, are you saying that society should just let him die? Yeah. No. Yeah. It might not be the entire party. But these people are no longer the fringe. They are driving the Republican Party. Joining me now, Jonathan Capehart, editorial writer for the Washington Post and MSNBC contributor. Jonathan wrote a powerful piece about the bullying today. And Alex Wagner, MSNBC analyst and reporter for the Huffington Post. Thank you both for joining me. Jonathan that was a low moment in the debate. It really was a low moment. We've had three debates already, and at each one, when you think it couldn't get any lower, it does. And for the Republican Party, which has used patriotism as a cudgel against, against its opponents, for, the, for someone in the Republican Party to boo a, sir, a member of the military who is in Iraq, let's not forget, he didn't just do this YouTube video from his living room. He is overseas in Iraq fighting in a war um, that this country right. this country is waging. He's in danger's way when he's shot. Yes, he is, yes, he is in the line of fire, and you had him booed, and then you didn't have any of the nine people on stage condemn the booing, not, on, not from the stage, and certainly not after. Now, to be fair, Rick Santorum on yeah, Fox today. Well, let me put this uh, up that Rick Santorum today uh, did say this on Fox. I condemn the people who booed that gay soldier. That soldier is uh, serving our country. I thank him for his service to our country. I have to admit, I, I seriously did not hear those boos. Had I heard them, I certainly would have commented on them. But as you know, when you're in that, that sort of environment, you're, you're sort of focused on the question and formulating your answer. And I just didn't hear those couple of boos that were out there. But I certainly had I. I would have said that that was, uh, I, would have, I would have said, don't do that. Uh, this man is uh, serving our country, and, and uh, uh, you know, we are to, uh, to thank him for his service. Alex Wagner, I mean, uh, we can debate whether he heard them or not. I mean, I was in presidential debates in uh, 04. I heard everything in the audience. But notwithstanding uh, that, the fact that none of them responded, all of them can't say they didn't hear it. And they certainly heard it when we heard the in the last debate uh, the, the whole booing and reaction about an uninsured 30-year-old dying. Right. Uh, and we heard it in the first debate when they cheered, when Brian Williams <laughs> was just raising the question about 234 people executed under Governor Rick Perry. Perry hadn't even got to the answer, just the right. question they started cheering. I mean, is, is, has this party gone so far to the right that they, I mean, off the cliff to the right, that they are not concerned about the moral tone you're saying to whether voters support you or not there's a level of, of, of civility that people should have at this level of political engagement I do think that, that it's pretty shocking that the reactions that we've seen from the crowd in these last few debates and I, I, I you know it's almost like the Roman Coliseum you sort of expect the lions to be trotted out there's so much bloodlust in the audience um, you know Rev I, I think that there are certain parts of the GOP establishment that find this kind of behavior very disturbing but but 
at the end of the day, it's really up to the guys on stage to curtail it, to address it, to speak to it, and they didn't, as you said. Um, I'd also point out what Rick Santorum said about the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, basically calling it social experimentation is just a wild distortion of the truth. This is a policy that had months and months of study surrounding its repeal. 700,000 active service members were asked about it. 70% of the respondents said, hey, the, the, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell is not going to endanger the United States military. You had, you know, the Joint uh, Chiefs of Staff signing on to this, Secretaries of, of Defense, uh, former and current are, are, are advocates of it. You, you know, I, I think that there's an irresponsibility with the facts with a lot of this stuff that, that is, is quite shameful in a lot of respects. Well, let, let me give you something else, uh, uh, Jonathan Capehart and, and Alex. Mitch Daniels, a respected member of the party establishment, governor, all of that. Let me show you something that he said today that to me uh, was very offensive. His life has been so far removed from the world in which jobs and wealth and prosperity are made that he doesn't understand and probably cannot understand how uh, damaging his policies are. He just inhabits a different planet, um, I think, in that, in that respect. He, being President Obama, right. his life is so far and so different to a life of wealth and jobs. I mean, this other this other person, you're different. What does that mean? I what do, what do you, what do you mean his life is so well, different? I think, well, if I heard that clip correctly, he was talking about the president's policies, the president's economic policies. Yeah, but he and how referred to his life. His, his life is coming up. We're so different. I mean, are we back to where you, if you're a woman, if you're African American, Latino, if you're gay, if you're different than the, are we back to white male landowners or the uh, model of what Americans are? What do you mean his life is so different? Well, I mean, if that's what if that's what he said, then I am with you. I I heard something different, but if, okay, if, wait, if but let's be fair. Right, Let me play it again. Great, right, terrific. <laughs> let's play the tape again. Uh, uh, because I would never want Alex to go back to the Huffington Post <laughs> and say that I got it wrong. Can we play this again? Let's go back to the tape. His life has been so far removed from the world in which jobs and wealth and prosperity are made that he doesn't understand and probably cannot understand how uh, damaging his policies are. He just inhabits a different planet um, I think in that in that respect okay his life okay. has been so removed he inhabits a different planet right. and that's not and, policy and, and therefore his, his life right his life and He's therefore his policy that's right. not his policy no 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 I got you I got you Rev and, and, no, and I got him no, you got happened. you got him and I got you and I you know I I, I it is actually rather surprising because Mitch Daniels is supposed to be someone who is the establishment, the grown-up within the Republican exactly Party, right. and he is espousing this line of argument that continues this notion that President Obama is from, he's the other. He's not yes. one of us. Exactly. Not one of us is to be and who is us? Uh, I mean, that's what I'm saying, Alex. Who is us? This kind of language, this kind of, of, of trying to imply some other it's, yeah, he's trying it's exactly so it, it, well it's impugning you know his experience that saying that he's from another planet it's 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 in furtherance of you know there's there are str uncomfortable strains of the birth the, the birther thing the thing the idea that obama's from so outside the american mainstream he can't possibly understand the re real concerns of americans you know i will say in his defense he did rebuff talk of obama being a socialist in the same uh breakfast and and i think that that's important as we talk about people on the national stage who are not you know who are not part of the problem of inflammatory rhetoric but at least trying to combat it on some terms and and mitch and daniels i think to some degree was trying to do that and very quickly this is very different from what speaker boehner said last week when he said that sometimes he thinks he and the president when they talk to each other that they that the two of them are talking to each other from different well, planets. Well, he did say a different planet. I mean, but it's I, I give Alex. Alex said he said policy. he wasn't a socialist. He just said he was from another planet. That's all. Yeah, they both lied. They both that. Jonathan Capron and Alex Wagner have a good weekend. Thank Thanks, both of you for being with us.